Hello and welcome to the Book of Unwritten Tales 2, where uh, things have taken a bit of a turn and we need to start looking around and figuring out where we are. What's this? Hmm, some kind of little bag. I'll take it with me. Okay. This must be garbage from the upper town. The tableware might not be the latest word in fashion, but it's perfectly fine, apart from the leftovers. No, I think I'll just leave it there. <laughs> the plates are covered in greasy leftover sauce, and I'm not a fan of washing up. Especially when I didn't even dirty them myself. Yeah, okay. I guess maybe we'll have to clean them and then take them. A bit of sewer pipe is so heavy that it's sunk halfway into the ground over the years. Not surprising, really. The ground here isn't stone, it's firmly trodden waste. I wonder where the pipe comes from. Seastone is known, or shall we say infamous, for not having any sewers to speak of. Maybe someone wanted to change that, and this is both the beginning and the end of their efforts. Hmm. A bit of sewer pipe is so heavy that it's not surprising. There's a few artificial columns and arches here, as well as natural caves. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some mining done here once. <laughs> Maybe I can get a better view from up there. Yep, definitely better. <laughs> Not decisively, though. Okay. A fur collar that looks almost new. Why would you throw something like that away? One could have given it to the poor, or even left it on the chinchillas. Hmm. Ah! Ah! That's um all I wanted. Okay. We can climb onto the wagon. And there's probably something we need to do with the dirty dishes and the sewer pipe. A couple of power lines. They lead through the ceiling somewhere up there. One strand goes into the rat's camp, the other leads down towards the junkyard. Junkyard? I always thought Gnome Hole was the only place with electricity. But beyond the White Bridge Mountains, it's been used here and there for years. I always thought Gnome Hole was... Okay, so we don't have anything in our inventory at the moment that we could... ...use on these things? No? Fluffy fur? No. Okay then. Well, oh, there's more to look at. The moon is shining through the hole. That could be my way out of here. If the situation in Seastone really is as dismal as Remy says it is, I'll have to be very careful once I leave the hole. That said, first, I gotta get up there. Looks like, hmm, a V-belt? I wonder how it got up there. Uh, clearly out of my reach. Hmm. And you don't really have... You've got the fluffy fur and a little sack and... Yeah, you don't have... Don't have anything that would help. Cave. Lit area. Rubbish heap. That's, that's a knight that says knee. A huge mountain of rubbish, tons of it. And I just happened to find a card figurine of my very favorite hero. It's a sign. I've read all your stories. He was brave and proud and he never gave up. 
Yogi. Because of you, I wanted to experience adventure and left the White Bridge Mountains. And you, you were only a story. Aww. Hmm, a bell. I guess it's there to get people's attention. Which is usually what bells are for. Hmm. Should I ring in or not? Do I really want the attention of someone up there? But the hole seems to be the only way if I ever want to get out of here. Yes? Are you finally finished? Bill? That you? Where the vein? A black cat must have crossed my path. <laughs> yes? It's me. Could you maybe lower me a rope? No way, you're a wanted criminal. There are posters of you up all over. How's it look up there? How are things in town? Dreadful. Not a customer in sight. It's almost as bad as during the war. I should have known. Politicians are bad for business. Every last one of them. No matter what they say, I didn't kill the Archmage. Anyone with any brains knows that. You couldn't have harmed a hair on the Archmage's head, even if you wanted to. But as long as that's the official version of the story, I'd rather not think about it out loud. There are posters of me hanging everywhere. Here, not a bad likeness if you ask me. <laughs> Wanted for the murder of Archmage Alistair, the scurvy, dangerous, armed and stinky fiend Wilbur Weathervane. I don't stink. Or if I do, it's only because I spend a few days in bed. I told them if they wanted to catch you, they'd have to put a serious bounty on your head. Would, would you betray me? If the price is right, sure. But until then, I'm keeping my head down, like everyone else who's got any sense. Well, you've got to be smart these days, or you'll end up running around in a pink tutu, or worse. Come on, get me out of here, Bill. I won't cause any trouble. That'd be a first. Please, I want to leave town. Don't blame you, but it's too risky. If Van Buren catches me, she'll probably turn me into a pink, doe-eyed petting lamb. Come on, for old time's sake. I'm not putting my neck on the line for you. Ask your friends, those darn rats. Aww. Bill? Bill? Be there? Hmm. He'll never help me unless there's a juicy profit in it for him. Well... We'll just have to find him some juicy prophet. The hole up there is even higher than I thought. I'm going to need more than a folding ladder if I want to reach it. The hole up there is even... I'm going to need more than... Yeah. Um... Let's go back down. And we'll take a look at the cave. The dark ah, cave. Wilbur, there you are. Have you changed your mind? I... no. I just want to get out of here. Highly regrettable. What do you want down there in that dark hole? I found your wand down there years ago. My grandfather, a true rat adventurer of lore, Climbed into that hole just to find out what was down there. When he didn't return, everyone thought he was dead. Apart from me. You followed him? Despite all the warnings, but I didn't find him. Instead, I found a wand. Just mm. as I began examining it, a terrifying ghost set upon me and I fled. I don't know why I took the wand with me. Perhaps it wanted to be taken. Yeah. When a little gnome came down to our town some years later with big ideas of becoming a mage... I was very proud of my wand and... Oh. This ghost that followed you back then, do you think it's still down there? I haven't dared return to the darkness for years because I'm convinced of it. Then maybe... 
you shouldn't go back down there. Perhaps you're right. But someone's got to go and find out what's going on with that wand, right? Remy? Courage and conviction, Wilbur. Courage and conviction. Good luck. Aww. There isn't much you won't find down here. Hamster wheels, for example. A massive pipe. Perhaps iron or lead. Presumably it transports something from the town into one of the caves down here. And probably I really, really don't want to know what it is. Hey, yeah. That's what I thought as well. A massive pipe, and probably. Um. Someone had to install the pipes down here. How did they get into the underground? And even more importantly, how did they get back out? Well, they were probably lowered through the hole in the ceiling somehow. The design doesn't look too stable. On the other hand, it doesn't look like it was built any time recently either, which in turn speaks for its durability. Hmm. The design doesn't look too stable. Back in the White Ridge Mountains, I had to listen to long lectures by the cellar master about different types of stone and minerals. Can't really claim that I listened all that attentively, but that looks like a coal vein to me. All right, coal vein. Back in the White Ridge, can't really... Hmm, maybe it's a symbol warning visitors about the evil in the hole. Or maybe it keeps the evil trapped down there. There are ancient symbols that can do just that. Hmm. How does something like that end up in the trash? If I had a bongo drum, I'd play it all day long. At night. <laughs> and then others would throw it in the trash. Ah, got it. Yeah. The hole is eerie. Whenever you get close, it feels like icy fingers are reaching for you. Hmm, that's probably the ghost. Remy will be fine. He's tough, he's smart, brave, everything a hero should be. And nothing ever happens to heroes. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. I don't feel like playing. I want to get out of here. I want to go home. I don't feel like playing. Okay, then. Um. We've got one more area to look at. What? Ah! What the heck? Hey! What's the big idea? Did you build this trap? I'd love to, but I'm stuck. Hey, stop that. Stop that. Are you nuts? Um. An old rope, still in pretty good shape. I can't quite. Reach. Hmm. I don't know how deep the hole is. My feet can't touch the ground anyway. I'm a gnome. I'm not sliding in any deeper, but I can't get out either. I'm stuck like a cork in a bottle. Hey, little fella. I could use some help here. Um, hello? I think he's trying to hide from me. I probably scared it. It doesn't respond to me. Maybe it just wants to sit the whole thing out. It doesn't. I can't quite reach. Okay. Well, I mean... Okay then. Good. Got it. Um. 
not the stick to the rope. Hamster wheel onto the rope. The hamster wheel has the right weight, but it's too unwieldy to throw with the rope. Hmm. I'll tie the stick to the rope. Mm -hmm. Done. No. Okay. Catch the robot. We've got some choices here. I wonder if I... No. <laughs> Even if I could catch it with a lasso, it doesn't look strong enough to pull me out of here. Okay. Let's do that instead. Yep. Or not. Mm, still too light. And that's too unwieldy to throw. But what if... No, I can't... I can't set this down first anywhere or anything. No. Um... Oh. The fur would fall out right away. I need some way to attach it. Okay, fur. Oh, I don't have any way. If you help me get out of here, I'll give you a stylish and practical empty bag. <laughs> hmm, nothing. What a surprise. Use the robot with the poster. Maybe it's a kind of bounty hunter and he's captured me because of the poster. Hmm, not likely. Bill said they haven't put the bounty on me yet. Can't use the poster with anything else either. You don't want to catch the robot. The stick isn't a good enough weight for the rope. I can't get it high enough. Hmm. We don't really have any other choices. We only have the hamster wheel and the stick. And we've got the fur. But, um... We don't have any way of attaching it. I don't know how deep the hole is. My feet can't touch the ground anyway. I'm not sliding in any deeper. Okay. So, can I... No, I can't poke in the trap with the stick or anything. Uh... Bribe the robot with the fur. I have a very expensive, very fluffy fur. If you get me out of it, it's yours. Hmm, nothing. Nah. Hmm. Can't exactly go back to rubbish. I'd heap. love to. <laughs> yeah. Um. We don't have all that many things here to work with. And uh. We really can't. Maybe it's a kind of bounty hunter. Hmm. Not. 
We really can't do anything. Doesn't look like the wheel got used much. Somewhere there's a lazy fat hamster. Doesn't look like the wheel got used much. S this person is considered armed and dangerous. Like I even own a land shark gun. As if. Bag with a drawstring. Empty. Strip a pretty long head fur. The little cape that someone made for the wooden knight knee figure. A small stick. About one sea stone cubit in length. An old rope. Still in pretty good shape. Hmm. This should not be this difficult. A massive pipe, perhaps iron or lead, and probably I. Hmm. I'll tie the stick to the rope. Mm -hmm, done. And then you can't use this with anything in the inventory. No. And this doesn't work. Yep. Nope. Hmm, still too light. But then you don't want to do this either. The hamster wheel has the right weight, but it's too unwieldy to throw with a rope. And you also don't want to like disassemble the hamster wheel or anything. Or use it with anything in here, or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this, uh, this doesn't work because you don't have anything to... The fur would fall out right away. I need some way to attach it. Yeah. And you can't use the fur with the rope or anything. I can't believe this, but, um... I'd love to. It kind of looks like I'm stuck. And I need to look at the walkthrough to see how to get out of here. <laughs> Weird as it seems, because this doesn't look like a complicated problem. So I'll look at the walkthrough and be right back. Okay. <laughs> you need to throw the stick at the robot. One of the only things that I didn't try. Hey, you! Hi there! I just want... Mm. An approximately fist-sized stone. That would really hurt if it hit me in the face. So now we have a stone that we can tie to the rope. Hope it stays on. And then we can do this. Yep. There we go! Great! And now, the old heave-ho! That got it! Hey, wait! I'm not gonna hurt you! Take the rope. The rope helped me once, maybe it can again. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else we can do here. So, let's take a look at the lit area. That, that 
must be one of the monsters Ethel was talking about. Better if I have a plan on how to overpower it before it notices me. Oh, so it isn't friendly then. Oh, hello. You must be the terrible monster that was destroyed by my son's wonderful trap. <laughs> oh. No one would ever expect a workshop like this under a junk heap. Thanks. Built it all myself. I worked on it day and night. Didn't want to disrupt slate production, of course. But it was worth it. My son's an inventor, just like his old man. Here he can learn everything he'll need for later in life. I'm Wilbur Weathervane. You... you're not going to eat me or anything, right? Wilbur? Wilbur? You're, you're, you're not Nate's little friend, the one that was caught by the orcs in the wildlands? You know Captain Nate? Know him? We idolise him. Without him, I'd never have met the love of my life, Esther. Gulliver's the name. Welcome, Wilbur Weathervane. Feel at home. Any friend of Nate's a friend of ours. Oh, nice. Yes, we promised an old friend we'd name our first child after him. And this little robot? Nate. Nate? We promised Nate we'd name our first child after him. We actually wanted to wait a bit, but my little cherry blossom started having problems with depression, said I worked too much and that she felt lonely. You know how women are. No. Nope. So then we built Nate. Well, we started him off at least. He did the rest himself. He's a great little inventor. Ah. I remember Captain Nate talking about zombies who helped him in the wild lands. Anyway, what brought you here to Seastone? A better life. If you can make it in Seastone, you can make it anywhere. Hard work still pays around here. I learned that from Bill. He got us the job here. Bill the Merchant? The most successful trader in Seastone. Only just arrived in town and we're working for a man like that. Not bad, eh? Nate built himself. Once he could hold a screwdriver, there was no stopping him. But he doesn't only tinker with himself. He invented most of the machines in here. That thing too. It's really impressive. What, what does it do? That, he got it in his head that a machine could do my work quicker. But as you can see, it's not working. I think I scared Nate earlier. He's shy and has never seen anyone like you before. In fact, he only knows Esther and me. Where is Esther? Oh, at home, but it's not really presentable. Uh, oh well, no hurry, maybe later. Mm. I'm not so sure if Bill is really such a great guy. How can you say a thing like that? It was him that smuggled us into town, even though zombies aren't exactly popular here. Sure, it wasn't cheap, but Bill has his costs and he created a possibility for us to work off our debts. We build these slates for him. They're a hit, he says. He always wants more. Hey, I had one just like that. You see, a hit. Bill has a nose for good business. I'll work hard and learn from him. Then I can finally offer my family what they deserve. My magic slate was evil and it deceived me. Magic slate? Poppycock. They are neither made out of slate nor are they magic. If they're not magical, how do they work? Because I don't see any gears. I don't really know. Has something to do with the intelligent stone, as Bill calls it. Fell from the sky one day in a blaze of light. I cut off a thin slab, set it in a wooden frame, and then give it an almighty electric shock. That's all. You, you pump electricity into the rock and that wakes it up? Yes, you could put it like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. It's a serious problem. How am I supposed to finish the last batch if I don't have any power? And Bill came up with the idea for the slates. I never would have believed it. Why not? He's very innovative. He copied the idea from a trader down south with his very own eyes. At first, he had a couple of carpenters from the lower town work on it, but they just kept wanting more and more gold. Didn't give Bill a chance. He had to let them go and ship production down here. We were lucky that we were standing at the gates at just the right moment and were looking for a job. 
And now we're just one batch away from earning our own gold. How do you deliver the slates to the upper town? Have you seen the hole above the pile of rubbish? Bill lowered us down through it, and every time we finish a batch of slates, we ring the bell and he sends down a basket. So the hole in the ceiling is the only way out of the underworld? The only one I know about. And we don't need any more. The current batch is our last. Esther, Nate and I will be pulled out of this stinking place and can finally begin our undead lives in earnest up there. When will the next delivery be ready? Never, by the look of things. No electricity. If I help you, will you take me with you when you leave? Hmm, why not? If you help us, we'll help you too. Of course we will. Right. Then, so why don't you have electricity? <laughs> That's what I would like to know. I guess it's got something to do with those darn rats. They use the same cables as us. They probably wanted to sabotage production. I can't believe that. The rats are very nice. Nice? They attacked my wife, wanted to eat her. And now I'm sure they want to prevent us from working our way out of poverty. Don't talk to me about nice. There's a lot to do. Best I get to work. That's the spirit. You only get anywhere in this life through hard work. Hmm. Seems like there are some misunderstandings here between the zombies and the rats. Maybe we can do something about it. Why build something out of wood when you can build it out of iron? That was one of my granddad's favourite sayings. That philosophy brought me iron toys, iron shoes for the garden, and lucky, my iron horse. Gulliver, may I please borrow some boards? No problem, I've got more than enough wood to complete the order. Gulliver uses these power cables to shock the magic slates to life. Or at least he used to. Mm -hmm. The electricity died recently. Gulliver blames the rats. Gulliver uses these power Or Let's see. According to Gulliver, the electricity failed a while back. But he needed to wake up the slates. Hmm. I don't think it's because of the cables. The electricity doesn't even get this far. Maybe I should follow the cables, see if I can find the problem. Yeah. The electricity... This is the strangest rock I've ever seen. It glitters and it glows a little. That thing looks magical to me. I don't want anything to do with it. That thing looks magical to me. Works! All right. So in case we need water. Um... Boiler, combustion chamber, flywheel, a steam engine, clearly. The steam engine is probably supposed to power the strange machine next to it. Doesn't look like it ever did, though. The engineer must have run into a snag. The steam engine is probably... Doesn't look like it ever... Let's look at this, then. That's one of the little robot's inventions. The machine is supposed to somehow help relieve his hard-working father. But I don't know how. That's one of the little... Ro the machine is supposed... Wooden box. A small box with a switch on it. I will resist. <laughs> hmm, well, all right. That could be the best machine ever built. <laughs> As a gnome? I can recognise what that is immediately. A garbage sucker, which sucks garbage in the front and blows it out the back. Some might wonder why, but good inventors never ask such questions. <laughs> oh, this is a clock cuckoo's nest. They are so rare. They build their nests in human houses and disguise them as clocks. 
When the homeowners aren't looking, they fly around and steal cookies and other treats. Oh. Hmm, although it looks more like a replica of a clock cuckoo's nest. There are people who actually hang these things in their living rooms. The clock isn't ticking. Presumably, it can be wound through the little hexagonal hole in the dial if you have the right key. The clock isn't ticking. I've never seen tape that wasn't useful for something. Mm -hmm. Um. Everything down here is old and used. Some of it's pretty strange too. But every single thing now has a second life and a new task. Everything down here is old and used. But every single thing... Okay. So with everything that we've got... Oh. Is there anything more we can talk to you about? If I disturb him for no reason, he'll make even less progress. Best if I just let him get on with it. Okay. Let's go see if we can get something done here seems Gulliver's tapped the rats lines for some electricity hmm as it is everything looks fine the problem must be further up further up oh Seems Gulliver's tapped the room. Mm. Eh, uh, clearly out of my reach. Yeah. Can we do something about that? Is that long enough? The wooden board is about four gnome steps long. I'm one gnome step, two small feet and a big thumb in height. I'm not enough. Ah. Onto the wagon. Oh, can't you use that if you're on the wagon? Nope. Alright then. Uh... Can't combine the short boards with the long one. I attached some double-sided tape to both the outside and the inside. Two are better than one. Okay. And then... I'm not quite sure why, but I glued the fur onto the inside of the wheel. Alright. So now it's an insulated wheel. Doesn't look like there's anything we can do with it right at the moment. Um, oh, right. Can we do anything with the pipe? Oh, do we have something heavy? <laughs> Seesaw. Okay, I might be alone and pretty depressed, but I'm still not at the point where I'd sit on a seesaw all by myself. No. The wooden board and the pipe form a kind of seesaw. Yes, they do. Um. Okay. I guess we could 
could see about maybe using something with the dirty dishes. If we can. No. Mm -mm. Well, I don't think there was anything on the rubbish heap. Um, what about the cave? Now that we have all of this stuff. No. No. Rope? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Even if I can't do anything else, I'm sure I can throw ropes over things. <laughs> Even if I can't do... Um... No? Boards? No? Tape? No? Nuh-uh. Okay. I'll tie the other end off here so it doesn't fall. Even if I can't do any... I'll tie the other end off here so it doesn't fall. Oh, oh, okay. I, um... I have no idea what to do with that now. <laughs> um... And there isn't much... else we can do anywhere either. I don't get the whole empty little sack rope interaction thing. What is this supposed to do? Pull the rope with the little sack closer. What? I don't get it. Mm -mm. Um, oh, look into the rats then. Oh, wow, there's a lot here, too. Sink is full of soup bowls. I don't know how many rats come here for a hot meal on any given day. Must be dozens of them. Sink is full of soup bowls. I don't know. Okay. Um, the cook hasn't left my side for a moment. Remy probably told her to watch me. I think she's a little cuckoo. She mumbles to herself all the time. Um, the little guy seems to be doing well. He gets fed regularly, has his own swing. Not a bad life. Hmm. If I was still small as a rat, I could easily leave the caves. The rats have their secret entrances to the city everywhere. Yeah, not gonna happen at the moment. When the candle is lit, it doesn't just provide light, it also warms your feet when you're rat-sized and lying in Timmy's bed. I think the cook will be pretty upset if I just take the candle. Okay. The cook bought me the water skin on the second day. It was high time too. I was dying of thirst. 
It's made of rubber. That's pretty unusual. Water skins are usually made from everyday materials, such as animal stomachs and the like. Not something exotic like rubber. Hmm. I don't know how long I lay there. It must have been days. The rats were very kind to me, talking to me and offering me stuff to eat. That just made things worse. If they told me off, I might not have felt so guilty. Aww. My own bed is waiting for me in the White Ridge Mountains. It's warm and cosy. If only I could hide myself away there and not come out until I know what to do. Hi, Timmy. Hi. Um... Ethel believes there's monsters down there, but they're only zombies and robots as far as I can see. Hmm. They... they seem to be very nice. The skull throws things at us when he sees us. The little robot runs away if I get too close. Maybe I can get them to be more friendly towards you. Hmm. It looks like the power supply's broken. It's been down for two days. What happened? The same that's happening all over. Little Van Buren had some fun. We nicked electricity from the old role-play machine in the inn. And the inn's not there anymore. The inn? Not there anymore? What about Sloth and Blout? Well, they're fine. For now. If they play along nicely and keep their heads down, they might have a chance. Oh, bother. Nothing will happen to Remy. He's the toughest rat I know. But he's all alone down there in that terrible hole. Maybe. It's not all that terrible. No one has ever dared to go down there, apart from Uncle Remy and his grandfather. That hole is evil. I wish I could have gone down there with him. I, I know this isn't what you want to hear, but you know any way out of these caves? Dozens. Even one in my size? No. Apart from the unreachable hole in the ceiling, of course. Uh. That's exactly what I was afraid of. Yeah. Um... Hello. My God, oh God! My, how you've grown! <laughs> I'm, uh, Wilbur. Stu. You're the cook, and your name is Stu. Isn't that kind of metaphysical? In a cosmos composed of names, Billions upon billions of names, you, a cook, are named Stu. Destiny, fate, blind chance, mere coincidence, a fine kettle of fish indeed. No such thing as coincidence. Cause, effect, that's all. Ethel's my name. Want some stew? So you're the cook here in the rats camp? Yes. I am good at fixing things. Was a lab rat for years. You oh. worked in a lab? For a mad alchemist, until it got too dangerous. Wanted me to trial a face cream that would make you look ten years younger. I was only two at the time. <laughs> oh, right. I get it. From then on, I tried to be really stupid, attempted to fail at every experiment. The question is, if one tries to fail and is successful doing that, has one really failed? Can I ask what happened to your leg? An alchemistical accident? No, I gnawed it off myself. What? Down there in the cave. You'd have done the same. Ooh. Somehow I just really doubt that. There are monsters there, I'm telling you. And they've got it in for us. If you have to choose between your leg and your life, then you nibble. Um... If you know a lot about alchemy, then you can brew potions, right? Like shrinking potions, for example. Oh, don't hold much store by magic potions. People start craving them. Start with weak potions from itsy-bitsy little files, then at some point they aren't enough anymore. Suddenly it's got to be small potions, then medium, then large, then epic! A single vial that would shrink me back to the size of a rat would be enough for me. Oh, no, no. Much too dangerous. Okay, then. What are you cooking? Stew. It's always stew. Mmm. Tasty. What kind? 
It's always the same, has been for years, but new things are added every day. Whatever happens to appear? Do you want a bowl full? <sighs> In... <sighs> what, um, exactly is in the stew? Vitamins, carbohydrate, bit of fat, roughage, fluoride. Want some? That's, that's not what I meant. Bodies are alchemistic machines. They aren't interested where their energy and lubricants come from. But my stomach might. Oh, don't be daft. All the rubbish is perfectly fresh and I know what I'm doing. So, want a bowl or not? Uh, sure. Well, I guess I'm kind of hungry. One stew coming up. That... this tastes fantastic! Cooking is like alchemy, just fewer explosions. Nice. We weren't finished talking yet, though. Hi, Ethel. Ooh! Um... I couldn't help but notice that you, um, sometimes mumble to yourself. I'm thinking. Well, um, most people do that silently. Oh, because they aren't thinking properly. You aren't asking the pertinent questions. For example? If glue sticks to anything, then why doesn't it stick to the inside of the glue tube? Why do noses run, but feet smell? Why is abbreviation such a long word? <laughs> I, uh, don't know. You see? You take these things for granted, but it's completely mad. Yeah. Perhaps one can ask oneself too many questions. What do you reckon? If a theatre has been filled to the last seat, who has this last seat been reserved for? Hmm? And how did the inventor of the clock know what time it is? That's... how do you come up with these things? There are unanswered questions all around us, and no one is doing anything about it. If you eat pasta first, then antipasta, have you eaten anything at all? <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't ask yourself all those questions. Or, at least, not all at once. Oh, it can do your head in. Was on the brink of creating a self-help group, but then I thought, self-help group? Isn't that a contradiction in itself? Yeah, maybe some questions don't need to be answered. But are we not here to answer questions? That's why I love alchemy. It gets to the bottom of life's deepest ones. Hmm. Rebby's gone. He's descended into the dark hole. Oh, he is so brave, all alone in the dark. He's taking another big risk. I wonder if that's such a smart idea. Oh, one of the downsides of risk is that it's risky. Do you know if there's a way out of here? A gnome-sized one, I mean. That big? Hmm, no. However, Monsieur de Dumas has a shrinking ring. He took it with him. Hmm. Then he probably wanted you to stay here. He can't understand that I... Maybe I'll feel better after a few weeks at home. Maybe yes, maybe no. He needs a friend by his side. Not maybe, not in a few weeks. Now. Thinks the world of you. All rats do. Then I'm afraid you've picked the wrong guy. Remy should never have locked me up in here. He should have just let me go. Had his reasons, always has. He should know that no matter how complicated it is, sooner or later, I'll find a way out of here. I'm pretty good at this kind of thing. Perhaps that is why. I... Hmm... Do you have any idea why there's no electricity? Nope, not a clue. Don't like electricity. Like fire. It's warm and gives light. Can be explained in terms of alchemy. Electricity is like... Pff, magic. It was nice to have met you, Ethel. Knew you already. You lay in Timmy's bed for days. Why? 
Anyway, it wasn't your fault what happened to the Archmage. You think? Imagine if a few rats were to die because it turned out that, in reality, you couldn't cook. How would you feel? Not good. I'd blame myself. Would feel stupid. But Monsieur de Dumas requests your assistance. You can't leave him in the lurch. I tried to help last time, too, and it ended in disaster. Who can say that it won't happen again? Questions, questions, tricky questions. Hmm. Well, I guess maybe we'll continue from here next time. Um, and we'll try to get the electricity back on or something. Uh, we'll see. For now, thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. If you like this video, please leave it a like. I would really love that. And also, please remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I will see you again next time.